Right, it's a man who thinks he's one thing and is that thing because that's his reality. And then all of a sudden, he gets presented with this other rea reality, this grand destiny, which is very surprising to him. I mean, it's like literally like you or I, just regular people going about their lives that all of a sudden one day are told that they're the king of England or the king of Spain and how frightening that must be, uh, the responsibility of that being thrust upon us. So. That's, uh, that's a big part of the journey that Arthur goes on, is having to overcome his doubts about whether he's um, worthy of this destiny. But at the same time, he's a special king because it represents resistance, and he's on the right side of history, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I mean, although, he, although we play him as sort of a bit of a scallywag, at the beginning, you know, he's a bit of a rogue. He's a product of his environment. But he's that's growing cool. up. I like that. I like it too, <laughs> and it, and it makes it more him more relatable and accessible. I mean, Arthur has always been sort of portrayed as this very noble man who goes on this noble quest to become the noble king. And our Arthur, which isn't as interesting, I don't think, is a man who's just a bit rough around the edges, a bit of a scallywag. He's cheeky, but he's got a good heart. Um, that all of a sudden is presented with this destiny and he says, you know what, that's lovely, but I don't want it, give it to someone else. But of course, denying destiny is not quite that easy. So that's, that's where the story begins for him. Guy Ritchie was saying that the film is really cool because of you, is that true? He, he didn't say that. <laughs> he said, <yeah>. <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. he didn't. The, the, the film is very no, cool. He said because you were, of, no, because you of Guy great. Ritchie's. <laughs> you know, that's, that's why I was so excited about this because, you know, you don't usually see period films handled with the type of uh, directorial sensibility that Guy brings to the table. I mean, he's so cool and vital and accessible and young and fresh and. You know, he's like, a, I always say he's like a rock and roll director. He's like punk rock, his, his directing style. And, and, and I think that like a sword and sandal epic like this told through the lens of punk rock is really exciting and, and original. Yeah, I had it. But I certainly don't take any credit for the cool. Guy, guy brings 80, 90% of the cool to the table. You know, it's okay to be humble. It's fine. I, I'm not even being humble, honestly. I'm really just not that cool. Guy is significantly cooler than me. But listen, I'll take it. I yeah. appreciate it. No, Guy Ritchie is super cool. Yeah. I, I get nervous when I talk to him sometimes. You know, I did too for the longest time. Um, you know, because he is just so charismatic and, you know, he's, um, he's so knowledgeable. I mean, he's deceptively because he sort of, he doesn't, um, he doesn't, come in the package of the sort of quintessential intellectual, but he actually is incredibly well versed in many, many topics. And, you know, he's, 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 he's a great dinner date, you know, he's, there's a lot of very exciting um, wisdom that he has to impart. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so I would get a little nervous around him too. And then, and then I got over it, you know, now he's like my old dad. So, yeah. I keep saying that just to annoy him. He's like my big brother, but. <laughs> my old dad. <laughs> but uh, also, uh, I think this industry is treating you very well, no? You're doing great stuff. You just did uh, Lost City Z. Yeah. In the middle of the Amazon, and it's, now King it's, Arthur. It's been a really lovely little run I'm having. I mean, I think that it's always sort of cyclical. There's, there's, there's a rhythm of an actor's career like everything else, but yeah, it, for this little moment now, I've been enjoying a good run and yeah, I've been very, feeling very grateful for the opportunities I've been given. And uh, could fame be damaging? I don't see you as a damaged person. I'm just asking. Yeah, no, I, I've, You're I've, cool you know, I've still. been, I've been in this, uh, I've been in this game for quite a while, and I've seen um, people fall victim to to fame and uh, and and money and all of the temptation that comes with it. You know, I think it really comes down to one the sort of the genesis of one's intention. Like I love storytelling and I've always been compelled to be to spend my life telling stories and so that's the only thing that's important to me and there's some other people come into Hollywood really because they're seeking fame 
and, and, and that's cool too, you know, as long as they're still doing a good job, but once they achieve that fame, you see that it can be a very corruptive force. I mean, I honestly just don't give a shit about it at all, you know. I just am grateful to get to work with the type of directors that I want to work with, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying, I, I think I got my feet on the ground, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> you look, they're there, right? Right, there they are. Great, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it, my man.